Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Clock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today we're going to look at the first letter of John in the New Testament, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, entitled The Word of Life. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerns the word of life. For the life was made visible, we have seen it and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim now to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, the first words in the book of Genesis are, in the beginning, when we think of the gospel of John, we are greeted with, in the beginning. Here in the first letter of John, he says, what was from the beginning. We understand that this is a close, close connection. For St. John, moved by the Holy Spirit, of course, as its author, we see this connection from the beginning of time to the end of time, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Everything is linked, united, and attributed to God's movement in the world. What was from the beginning? This tells us from a scriptural basis that St. John is connecting the dots for us. And so, he goes on to say what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we looked upon and touched with our hands. This is a first eyewitness account. St. John saying, I've seen this myself. I know it to be true. And when he talks about we, he's suggesting not just him, but the apostles and the early followers of Jesus. So he doesn't just talk about I, because there's strength in we. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you, he says. And so it's this idea of the apostles' mandate by Jesus to go out to all the world and proclaim the good news, to baptize all nations in God's name. St. John is preaching the word of God for your sake and for mine. He wants us to understand that God is making the invisible visible the untouchable, touchable, the unseen, seen. St. John realizes that it is important that the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached so that all can testify to the light when Jesus is the light of the world. This is closely connected to the life that is to come. For St. John believes in the Lord's resurrection his ascension into heaven, and his ascension into glory. Thereby, because this has happened, then we too will be judged. We too will have the opportunity of life that knows no end. And so this beautiful passage, friends, should inspire us to realize that, again, this is not some trend that we follow. This is not something we just hope for. The most powerful account in a courtroom is an eyewitness. I saw this person cross the road. I saw this person go into the bank, rob it, and come out with money. How do you know it's that person? Because I saw them judge with my own eyes. The court, the judge, the jury generally takes eyewitness accounts, especially when their testimony does not change as being factual. And so it is with us that in this letter of St. John, 
we see from the beloved apostle the truth of our faith. Not exaggerated or made up, not false, but true. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, was born into the world, conceived by the Holy Spirit, lived a life of holiness, preached the gospel of love, commanded that we be disciples of prayer, modeled true service, then offered his life for our salvation. He is our Messiah and Lord. He died and rose as he said. Then after some time, he ascended to the Father and sent the Holy Spirit as the advocate for us. These are all accounts that John attributes to be true. This is the basis of our faith in the Lord, found in our creed, professed at every Mass, loved with true Christ-like hearts, and believed, for Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so, friends, this prologue, this first part of the first letter of John should inspire us that his joy is completed in the preaching and the proclamation of the gospel. We too can feel the same way, that by our words, our actions, the way we live our lives, may others come to know Jesus. May they experience him who is the way, the truth, and the life. May their faith be deepened as we accompany them, and may they also accompany us on our faith journey so that we can come to know God, love God, and serve him more faithfully. How can I live this passage more fruitfully in my life? How can you do the same? How is God calling us to be another John? For God's Playbook friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.